Good morning. It's already been a blessing to be here this morning. It's like Brother Gary said, when you walk in the doors and you can just feel God's presence, that's when you know that it's right. That's when you know that the Lord, he's still in control of this old sin, sick, and dying world we live in. And, you know, like it's done been said, this, there's just so much going on in our world today. And a lot of it we just don't understand. Can't figure out why people had rather be mean than to be good. Can't figure out why people would rather tear something down instead of build it up. But that's just the way it is in this whole world that we're living in today. You know, there's people that would love to see the doors of these churches closed. You know, that we're kind of limited ourselves, you know, to what we do because we want to do it for the safety of one another. But, you know, we do it by the guidance of God. We don't do it out of anger. We don't do what we do as Christians out of hate. We don't do it out of fear of man. But if we're going to fear something, we need to fear God. We need to fear what it is that we will face if we don't do what the Lord tells us to do. And, and people said, well, there's so many mean people out there. There's so much meanness going on. I'm scared to get out. I'm scared to do anything. Last night, I kind of took a whooping because I was talked out of something from my wife. There was a vehicle on the side of the road, pitch black. Had to hatch up and had about half they owned out the back. You could tell they had a flat tire. And I wanted to stop and help them, but she was scared to. And I thought to myself, that is such a shame that we live in a world today that you can't stop and help somebody with a flat tire, whether it be day or night, without the fear of somebody else jumping out of the woods, knocking you in the head and taking what little you do have with you. That's just where we stand today. The world is mean, the world is dangerous. But you know what? My God's powerful. Amen. My God's powerful. These scriptures today, everybody's heard them. Everybody's probably had them preached to a hundred times. You fix and get it 101. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16 is where I'm going to begin reading this morning. You know, and this is when the, the apostles were called and they were sent out. And the world was pretty mean back then too, but it's nothing like what's going on today with all the just the blatant, just absolute meanness and destruction that's going on. But even then, there was things going on. There's nothing that we'll see in this world today that God don't have an answer for, I promise you that. But we have to be on his side. We have to be on the winning side. And we have, you know, we read the back of the book, we know we win as Christians. And we've done one, the, the, uh, the, the reward that's going on. We just got to continue on in this spiritual warfare that we're living in each and every day. We've got to hold on just, to, just a little bit longer. Um, you can skip up just a couple of verses there. And, and verse 22 of that, or right down there on the bottom, I'm going to get ahead of myself just a little bit. It says, and, he, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. That's what we're in right now. We're in a time of endurance. Yeah. And it's, it could be before this service is over. It could be tonight, tomorrow, the next day. It could be another thousand years from now. We don't know these things. But we do know but the signs of the time that is coming close. We know that the, the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, could be just expected at any given time. What do we do? Be ready. That's number one. Be ready to meet him. You know, right now, if your heart is beating out of your chest and you're unsure, you need to come to this altar. This service may be over. It may be directly for you this morning. But you need to come to this altar when the Lord guides you to come to this altar. Don't wait for no song of invitation. And Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16 says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in, in their synagogues. And you shall have be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for in that it shall be given to you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not that ye speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up his brother to death, and the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end 
shall be saved. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for what we already feel this morning. We thank you for your presence here today. And Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to have your way, Lord, however long or short you'd have this word to be this morning. God, just let it be effective. Give it to us exactly the way you'd have us to. Help me, Lord, to deliver it in the same manner, Lord. And God, most important, if there be a need here this morning, I pray that it would come to this altar, Lord, and lay it to you. Gain strength and courage, Lord, in knowing that you are our Heavenly Father. You are still in control this morning. Lord, we do love you, and we thank you. We ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, sometimes it, it's like it says in that verse 16, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. That's what it feels like in this world today, don't it? You know, the Christian people are really a minority in this world, if you really think about it. But we've got the strongest backing of anybody that could, they could ever be. Could we, you know, a few few weeks ago, the, the Lord gave us the message about the idol gods and, 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 the, and the way Elijah told them to, you know, make your gods do these things if they're real. Have your God prove their self. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. My God has proved himself time and time again to each and every one of us in here if we'll be honest with ourselves. My God is the real, the living, and the true God. He's the one that can make things happen. We are the ones that have to surrender to him like this says right here like the sheep we need to humble ourselves down to sheep even though we are in the midst of wolves out in this old old world that we live in we need to know that god is there he is our shepherd the bible tells us he is our good shepherd and only his sheep know his voice do you know the lord's voice this morning do you know the difference between when the devil's trying to lead you into something that's bad or when, when the Lord's trying to lead you into something? Can you tell the difference this morning? You know, that comes in with that personal relationship, you know, with myself and the Lord and yourself personally with the Lord. The Bible tells us to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I can't get you to heaven. If I could, I'd tie a rope to every one of you. Take you with me. I can preach you the word. I can be a witness for you. I can love you and I can pray for you, but I can't, take, I can't make you go to heaven. And Jesus is not going to do that either. He's not going to force you to accept him. He's not going to force you to ask for forgiveness of your sins, but he's waiting there ready and willing to forgive you when you do. We have somebody backing us. It says, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You think about an old snake, boy, he's crafty, ain't he? He'll lie and wait. He'll get you if you ain't careful. Boy, that camouflaged up night, I mean, perfect. You, you'll be stepping right on an old snake before you ever know it's there. And what's going to happen? It's going to rise out. It's going to get you. It's going to trap you. It's going to bring you down. It's going to hurt you. A lot of them are venomous and cause you to be sick. They're smart in what they do, even in their devious ways. That's where the people is in this world that we live in. They're so smart in their devious ways. But folks, we're to be as smart as these devious people, but to be harmless as the dove. Remember that symbol of God coming down, descending on the shoulder? That's a dove, did he not? They're peaceful animals. They won't bite you even if you catch one. They won't even try to, to peck you, I guess you would say. That's the way we as Christians are to be. No, we're not supposed to stand and just take a beating. No, we're not supposed to stand as Christians and just be pushed around and let this world do what they want to do because we're supposed to be, you know, like sheep for the slaughter and harmless as doves. You know, we're not supposed to stand there and just be the weak victim in this, folks. We have Jesus Christ. If you'll listen to him, listen to his guidance and what it is that he's telling you to do each and every day, folks, you'll see a change in your life. You'll see the people that's coming up to you that's trying to harass you and push your around a little bit, they'll start staying away from you, won't they? Why? Give them scriptures. Contradict what they're saying. Give them God's word. They can't argue with it. Because what they're telling you is probably very rarely written down anywhere for proof. But if you'll give them God's word, if you'll study this, you'll know it, and you'll live by God's word, and you'll let, use it in your daily battles that you face, you're going to be overcomers. You're going to win. Yeah, it's a mess out there. I still get discouraged every day. People telling me what I can and can't do. And I just turned 50 year old. Folks, I don't like to be told what I can and can't do anymore. I outgrowed that a long time ago. But we as Christians, you know, it's like we've talked about when all this comes. Yes, we do. We are expected to obey the laws of the land as long as it don't contradict with God's word. So that's what we got to do. 
But you know the old devil, he's out there. Remember in the book of Job, he talks about, you know, he's just wandering to and fro, seeking who he may devour. He's still out there. He's out there finding your weakness. He's out there. The devil knows your weakness. He knows what, what he can tempt you with and what you'll fall with. He knows his, his biggest opportunity with each and every one of us. You know, I was studying this week about, and I was reading about Samson and Delilah. You think about she tried three or four times to get old Samson to tell her, well, what's your strength? What is it that makes you so strong, that you're so mighty, that you're so powerful? He messed around with her a little bit a few times and told her some few odd things, knowing that he it was a trap because they set him up but then she really convinced him really convinced him well I'm not going to tell nobody and when he told her about there's not been a razor to touch his head what she did she went and told folks we got to try the spirits we got to know the good from the evil we've got to know that we're protected like verse 17 says beware of men that says it right there don't it beware of men that's our worst enemy. I mean, we, we've got bobcats and we got coyotes and got some wolves and, and we got snakes in the woods and all that. Those things are a whole lot less harmful to each and every one of us today if we were running through the middle of the woods with shorts on as man is. Man is one of the most dangerous creatures here on earth today. They're hurting their self. They're hurting one another. They're doing their best to bring you and I down. You know, you think about it, we're, we're having one service right now, you, and that was by choice, we know that, to protect one another because we love each other. But you know, they're doing their best to even stop that. That's when it's going to get really tricky because this old boy can get pretty hard-headed. If they try to tell me you can't have church, you can't do this, you just, you're going to shut it down, and we ain't never going to have church again, that's when you'll see this old preacher get pretty bullheaded. They, they can't do that. They can't do that. Folks, we got to hang strong in the Lord. It says, Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogue, and you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for the testimony against them and the Gentiles. Folks, we're going to be made fun of as being a child of God. We're going to be made fun of just like the, the, the prophets were and the apostles and all about where is your God? Have your God prove this? Have your God show this? Prove this? Look around, folks. My God has proved himself so many times in this world. It is so easy to tell people, hey, this is God. This is God. Everything around you see is of God, the good things. But he allows us to have these battles. Cynthia was reading me something the other day, and I don't know if I'll get it out just right. A bunch of military guys. They was all in formation. One of them was a Christian man. And, of course, that old colonel or uh, drill, drill sergeant, I guess it was, was giving him a hard time about being a child of God. And he told him, he said, son, he said, go out there in that Jeep, and I want you to move it over here. Soldier teared up. He said, sir, I can't. I, I don't know how to drive he said, have your God move it for you. Have your God teach you to drive. And I may not be getting this word for word. But the soldier in tears went over there. And when he reached up and he hit the button on them old Jeeps, and it cranked, every man in formation cried. He moved the Jeep, got out, and when he looked around, all of them, they said, we want to serve your God. That soldier was like, what changed your mind? They said, that Jeep ain't had a motor in years. Amen. Think about it. Amen. Think about it. That's the God I serve. Now, whether that was a true story or not, that is very possible. Very possible. Don't know that it was a true story or not a true story, but every word in what was just... So it's very possible. My God can move mountains. 
My God can fix this world that we're living in. My God can and will and has been protecting each and every one of us every day of our life. We just got to give it to him 100%. I'll say it a million times as long as y'all keep me here. You're either saved this morning or you're lost. There's no in between. There's nothing about just being a good old boy or a good old gal. You know, that ain't going to get you nowhere but a pat on the back here on this earth. You're either saved or lost this morning. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior or you're not going to make it to heaven. There's no other way of putting that. It's hard to get out of a church service without putting that across one time because that's the most important thing. It's good to have strength and knowledge in God's Word, but none of that is going to do no good. You could know that book word for word from Genesis, uh, from the word in the beginning to the very last word in Revelation. Amen? You could recite it, every single word, but that's not going to take you to heaven. It's a personal relationship, folks. It's about that endurance, you know. And that verse down there at 22 that I read earlier, you know, about we have to endure. We have to let Jesus Christ be there with us. We have to let him be our drill sergeant, our colonel, our general, whatever it is that you want to put him at. You know, but most of all, we need to accept him as our personal savior. We need to accept Jesus Christ and allow him to be the best friend that we've ever had and allow him to guide us through this garbage that we're going through. If not, we've all failed. Every one of us in this building right now, if we're not spreading the love of Jesus Christ, if we've not done that last week from Sunday to Sunday, then we've failed. Somebody, somewhere, in some way. But most importantly, think about it. When you have the opportunity to be a witness for Jesus and you don't, you failed him. And I say, everybody, I'm talking about me. I do the same thing. I have opportunities to pray for folks. They'll meet you in the store somewhere and they'll say, I I really need prayer. Well, then you need to start praying right then. Now, some will turn and walk away. They don't want that. But, folks, we need to be ready. You know, I heard old Chuck Swindoll, he is a, a teacher on the radio, a Bible teacher. He said we need to be ready to preach, pray, or die at any given time. And that made a lot of sense, don't it? You know, and we're all ministers. No, we're not all standing behind the pulpit preachers or pastors, but we're all ministers, every one of us, men and women in life. We all have a purpose in God's plan. But the problem is, are we fulfilling it? Are we stepping out? Here I am, Lord, use me. I trust that you're going to protect me as a sheep amongst wolves. I trust that you're going to protect me in a world full of angry and mean mankind. That's men and women alike. I trust you, Lord, with all I have, my heart, my soul. I trust you, Lord, with all my possessions. Can we say that this morning? Each and every one of us. How much do you trust the Lord? You can say, you know, I'm not asking you to tell me how much. Search your heart this morning. How much do you trust the Lord in your life with all he's got? Brother Paul, get us a song. Y'all probably better get used to that over the years. I hope it's years. Y'all keep me around. The Lord has shut it off just like a light switch. When it's done, it's time to quit. Y'all stand with me if you can stand. If you need to come pray this morning, come on and pray. If you have any doubt in your mind about your relationship with the Lord, you need to already be in this altar this morning. If you have any doubt about trusting him with your whole heart, with every and all thing that you have, then we need to be in this altar praying with you this morning. If you you have a weakness this morning, if you have troubles and trials in your heart, Jesus Christ can take care of all these things, folks. This is not just a sinner's altar. This is a place to gain strength, to gain comfort, protection. Think about the message this morning. When we go out these doors right here, this is our safety zone as Christians, folks. In God's house is our safety zone. When we go out there, we go back out to war. It's a spiritual warfare. Just as, Just as you stand this morning, if the Lord come back, how confident are you this morning? To rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just say.
pray. Let's know before we leave here this morning. Uh, if the Lord was to come back, I want to see you in heaven with me. I don't know your heart, but I know you do. Of God I come. I Just as I am, thou will receive, will welcome far unclean freely, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I I come just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to Folks, that's the second young man in what a month that's given her life to the Lord. You know, it's a wonderful thing. These two young men right here, they're the newest Christians in our church. They need our prayers. They need our support. Because guys, it's gonna, it ain't going to get no easier from here. But you have the greatest backer that you can ever have now in Jesus Christ. All you got to do is stand firm on him and call on his name. He'll be right there. And on the name of Jesus, the devil has to flee. So whew, that's worth it all right there, folks. Worth every bit of it. I can't add to this. Anybody got anything on their heart you need to say or do? I got it. Okay. A lot of y'all know, y'all, a lot of us know Eddie Brown, them. They have enough singing tonight at 5 o'clock at their church there by, by the jet. Anybody wants to go over, they said, sure, welcome. You know, they try to help us out a lot when they can. So uh, anybody that wants to go here singing, go over to Jasper Independent Methodist there by the jet. 5 o'clock singing.